Pray that the Lord would help us and bless us as we turn together to his holy and precious word of truth for our instruction. The word that's upon my spirit this morning, you'll find in Mark chapter 10, Mark chapter 10 and verse 13. And we'll read through to verse 16 again. And they brought young children to him, to Jesus, that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he, Jesus, took them up in his arms and put his hands upon them and blessed them. Well... This is all about parents and little children and the Lord Jesus. And I guess all parents, whoever you asked in the big, big wide world out there, uh, you ask them, uh, they want their good for their children. They will want some kind of good things for their children. And, and these parents were no different. They wanted the best for their children. And they knew that the very best for their children was true blessing. And they knew that the best was to be found in Jesus. Because there's all sorts of things that people can say, well, I hope you have a lucky life, or I hope uh, things go well for you. But those are all things that are pretty random. Uh, luck and chance can happen, and things go right or things go wrong. But you see... When the Lord Jesus here puts his hands and his arm, took them up in his arms and put his hands upon them and blessed them, that was a blessing that is good for time and for eternity. The touch of the Lord Jesus Christ is a touch that imparts power and blessing and love and kindness and compassion and care forever. And that is better than anything that you can ever imagine as a parent for your little children or for your children. And this was years and years ago. Jesus lived upon earth around about 2,000 years ago. What's that got to do with us, you might be asking? We can't go to Jesus now. But the answer is, oh, yes, yes. You can. You can bring uh, things to the Lord Jesus now. Jesus was here upon earth at this time. You could walk up to Jesus like these parents did. They brought young children to Jesus and they could tell him, please can you touch these children? Please can you take these children up into your arms? Please, can you bless them? They could ask of the Lord Jesus for him to do those things for them. But you might say, well, but he's dead now. The Lord Jesus died on a cross. Everybody knows that, you might be saying. Well, the Lord Jesus did die on a cross. As God, he was given at conception a human body. And he lived within that human body as God for those 30 odd years. And the time came for his human body to be offered as a sacrifice, an atonement, a recon reconciliation, a payment for sin. And his body died, and his body was laid in a grave. But you see, the Lord Jesus came out of the grave. The, the, the Bible is written amongst others, by people that saw the Lord Jesus Christ after he was risen. They knew him. They spoke to him. They experienced his love. They experienced his care. They knew it was him. And they witnessed that it was him. And they did great things in his name and proclaimed his name as the one that is living uh, forevermore. The Lord Jesus rose from this world, ascended up into heaven. There were people that watched. It was evidenced. It was witnessed. There were dozens of people standing around whilst Jesus spoke to them. And he ascended up into heaven. 
And a cloud took him. And then uh, some angels came and told the disciples and those that were standing there that Jesus, as you have seen him go up into heaven, is now in heaven and will remain there and will come back again one day. And he is in heaven uh, today. And uh, you see the Lord Jesus is alive and the Lord Jesus is has sent his spirit to be amongst us here upon earth. He has gone physically, but his spirit is here. And this is the important thing, you see, for us today. That though Jesus Christ is alive with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit in heaven, he is still alive today to be the source of blessing. To make things go well for time and for eternity and if we're truly concerned about our children if we're truly concerned about ourselves the one thing that's so important is to know that the blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ is with us and uh, so uh, you might say like, like these people here there were people when these people brought their children to Jesus that he should touch them, there were people, the disciples, that rebuked. That means they told these people off as if to say, you must go away. But Jesus, he was unhappy with that reaction. He was much displeased. He was more than just unhappy. He was very disappointed and said unto these people that had been sent away by people, he said to them, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. Don't tell them off, for of such is the kingdom of God. Jesus tells the truth. This precious Bible are, is the words of God, the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they are true today. They were true then and they are true today. And Jesus is alive today in spirit so that you and me and us here can bring little children before him. He says, let the little children come to me. Don't discourage them. Don't tell them not to come. Don't say they can't come. Because they can. And that's why we're so thankful. And uh, it was a real joy to me, in a way, to think that, uh, as I understood, that the little Hugo was born, and this might be the first Sunday that little Hugo was going to come to the chapel to worship God. It, it was a real joy to me to think that we can bring little Hugo before the Lord Jesus Christ. And though we... You imagine, you shut your eyes and you imagine we are able to come into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ with a little baby. And we are able to pray to the Lord Jesus Christ today that he is able to put his hands upon uh, them and bless. And it says here they brought young children to him. It's to Jesus that he would touch them. You see, Jesus is the one to whom we are to come with all our issues. And it is for, to Jesus that we are to come, as it says here, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. A little child, like little Hugo, sleep in his father's arms is very, very helpless. Uh, I'm sure uh, he needs... Clothing, washing, changing, cleaning, uh, comforting, everything. And that's why the Bible talks of little children. Because the Lord Jesus calls us to be like little children. To come humbly before the Lord Jesus Christ. Like little children praying, Lord Jesus, I am up against all sorts of things in my life. I am up against all sorts of impossibilities. 
A little child like Hugo can't change himself, can't feed himself, can't clean himself, can't walk himself, can't do hardly anything for himself. And that's a real example for every one of us to think that we can come humbly before the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's all sorts of things that are impossible for us. It's impossible for you to give yourself normal health and strength. And I say normal because we think it's normal, but actually it's a miracle of God that any one of us function as our human bodies. Just a small thing going wrong, and some of you might have experienced that in your life, perhaps recently or longer ago, but a small thing that goes wrong, and it's like the whole thing uh, doesn't, it soon fails, or it seems like it's going to fail. Normal health, so-called. We can't give ourselves that. That's an impossible thing to do for ourselves. We receive it from God every day, every fresh new day when the day dawns and the, the, the birds are singing and the dew is on the grass, the green grass and, and, and we feel invigorated by another night's sleep and ready, for, ready to face a day. Where does that come from? I can't make it happen. I can't even give myself a wink of sleep because that's the gift. It's a gift from God. Normal behaviour in children as well. We have so much uh, uh, issue with children's behaviour in schools, with uh, special educational needs and all sorts of things. But what makes us level-headed, if you like? What makes us able to concentrate, to be, uh, to be good and, and to be obedient and all these things? These are things that we can't uh, do really for ourselves. What about our development? How we grow the fingers, little Hugo's little fingers, no doubt. Uh, tiny, tiny fingers, fingernails, toenails. All those tiny little things. Can we make that happen? Well, the answer is, of course, like a little child says, I can't. I can say, I can't. I'm a grown guy, a grown, grown man. We say, I can't. I can't do these things. But what a wonderful thing. As little children... We come to the Lord Jesus. Whosoever shall receive the kingdom of God as little children, saying, I can't. Saying, Lord Jesus, do it for me. Do it for me. Little children. Hugo's not able to talk yet, but there'll be perhaps a time when he wants to get a coat put on or his shoes put on. Mummy do it or daddy do it because they can't do it for themselves. And, and, and you and I need to come to know, that's me. I'm always going to have a situation where I can't do it. But Jesus, do it. Do it for me. You see, we come to the Lord Jesus. There's so many things that are beyond and impossible to us. Conception is an impossibility to us. Perhaps some of you can think back of uh, all the impossibilities of, uh, I was talking to someone the other day who's expecting a baby and uh, she said, it's a miracle. We were told by the doctors we should never have children. And yet here I am, so many weeks pregnant, months pregnant, hoping to have a baby uh, relatively shortly. The miracle of God's conception. You see, these are things where your little child, in terms of what we can do for ourselves, God opens the womb and gives conception. The Bible tells us that many times over. The development of a child in the womb, little Hugo with all his perfections and uh, uh, no doubt uh, uh, characteristics and uh, things that remind you of various other relatives. How did all that come about? Psalm 139, I will praise thee, I will praise God, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That means fearfully means it's it's just uh, it's uh, outstanding. It takes us aback how wonderful our bodies are made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance, that means what I'm made of, was not hid from God when I was made in secret. We're all made in secret inside a womb. We were made in secret now to be revealed at the birth. But we were made in secret. What God was doing in secret is now revealed, but we didn't know. 
when we are curiously wrought, that means manufactured or made, in the lowest parts of the earth, God's eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. We all know that we come from a ball of cells, and yet that ball of cells differentiates into hearts and livers and kidneys and arms and heads and brains and eyes and toes and fingers, all differentiates from a ball of cells. God saw my substance. God saw what I made of when I was unperfect, incomplete. And in God's book, all my members were written. He wrote down the design of my liver, the design of my heart, the design of my eyes, and all that. Same for Hugo, which in continuance were fashioned. Over the process of time, you can't really see. It's imperceptible how a ball of cells slowly transforms into arms and legs and heads and all this kind of thing. They were fashioned in continuance when as yet there was none of them. They all came out of what was pretty much nothing. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum or the total of them. You see, the Lord Jesus formed us, framed us, modelled us, created us. The Lord Jesus is able to be with us in birth as well. Uh, birth is not the easiest thing, as no doubt uh, you'll be aware. Uh, but you see, it's a wonderful thing. What does the Bible tell us? God will look after ladies in childbirth if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. We go to the Lord Jesus with the impossibilities of birth. And then when a newborn baby comes, uh, like little Hugo, there's thankfulness. Abigail's been brought to her first Mother's Day, brought safely through whatever she's been through in all the ups and downs of life. Father, a Father's Day to be. A little safe arrival, the blessing of a healthy little child. These are things that you can't organise. I can't organise. The doctors and the nurses can't organise. We've seen uh, just recently, haven't we, where the doctors have had to say there's nothing that can be done in the case of poor, poor uh, Josh. We go to the Lord Jesus. As the child grows up, the blessings of growing up. We need help in that. The children growing up is, is there's effort, there's difficulties, there's challenges. Tiredness when they're little, but heartache sometimes when they're older. Difficulties, challenges. Not easy. But the, we come to the Lord Jesus and he's able to give us his love so that there's that commitment to each other. Father and mother, in bringing up the little baby, despite all the ups and downs, despite the challenges, despite the difficulties, that love, that commitment to the little baby. So the little baby, however much it costs us in something, whether it's uh, in time and energy and uh, whatever, however much it costs, you see, there is that love, that commitment to see these things through. These are things that only God can give us. There's so many people we see that give up and, uh, and, 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 and just, uh, but, and they don't, do, they don't just carry it on. Uh, as they say, a dog is for life, not just for Christmas, but so, is, so are babies. They're, they're, they're for life. They're blessings. But with all the ups and downs, uh, we need help. We need wisdom. We need strength. We need the Lord Jesus. And we come, like it says here, we shall receive the kingdom of God as little children, knowing that there's things that I can't do, but we've come to the Lord Jesus. And then, of course, there's one great thing that we can't for sure do. There's two births that we need. Little Hugo has had his birth of water. He has a body that functions on water. It, uh, there was lots of water uh, at the time of a birth. We are born of water. But Jesus says you need another birth. You need a birth of water which begins with water. It's sustained by water. And that's why God has given us such a world that's so full of water. Because that's what need is needed here on earth. But Jesus tells us the truth. 
He tells us the truth lovingly because he loves us. He wants the best for us. And he tells us we all also need a spiritual birth. John chapter 1, we can see that, uh, if I can turn it up, uh, we see that, uh, sorry, John chapter 3, we see that except a man be born of water, that's the first birth, and of the spirit, that's the second birth, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. All, all of us are born of water, but there's another impossibility here. You and I need to be born of the spirit. And again, we have to come as little children. I can't do it. I'm helpless. But the Lord Jesus is able uh, to help us. Spiritual life so that this life is going to end. But we need a life, a spiritual life that's going to be after death. That's going to uh, last forever. It comes from the Lord Jesus. And you know... There's so many impossibilities. Little babies. Uh, you know, we've had a little baby that uh, was taken from us. And the time when that little baby was to be taken into eternity, it's like you're standing there at the threshold of eternity. Well, you cannot go any further with that little child. But we go to Jesus. Jesus tells us you can bring a child that's about to enter into eternity to the Lord Jesus We've just been witnessing in the last month or two, uh, dear Josh, tragically wounded in hospital on the threshold of eternity. But what prayer there was. Suffer the little children to come unto me. He wasn't such a little child, but he had the needs of a little child. Except we come as little children, we shall not enter therein. A little child before the Lord Jesus. Here is a soul that's got to depart into eternity. Josh, we cannot go with you. We cannot keep you here. But Jesus, we come to Jesus. That he would put his hands upon him and bless him. And give him that gift of God which is eternal life. You see, we come. Uh, of such is the kingdom of God. Such people. Such people that know that they're unable to do anything for themselves and can't for sure. They're broken, they're lost, they're, they're dying. But we can bring them to the Lord Jesus Christ with him. We read that, didn't we? There may be many things with, which with men, verse 27, are impossible, but not with God. This is our foundation. We are here upon the foundation that I am unable to do so many, many things. But Jesus Christ can do all things. With God, all things are possible. And that's why they took the children to Jesus all those years ago. For him to put his hands upon them and bless them. And that's why we brought uh, our little Samuel that was dying to the Lord Jesus that he would put his hands upon him and take him. And you know, in some remarkable way, the Lord Jesus came into our room uh, whilst that little child was dying. And, and, and a spirit came, and I uh, made the hair stand up on the back of my neck, and came through that little child, and he never flinched. And it went through my uh, shoulder uh, and away to glory. Jesus is able to bless today little children when you have something that is impossible for you to deal with and we praise god we praise and bless god that he is able to care for our little ones so much better than ever we could care for our, for, for for them ourselves and every christmas day we go to the little grave where there's actually two little children there samuel and jessica and we thank god that god has blessed us with them taken them to himself and he is eternally able as the most loving dear heavenly father to nurture them and you just have to imagine that as little uh, little uh, hugo is in the hands of phil just this time our children can be in the hands of our lord jesus christ for all eternity same with josh you know i was thinking uh, and praying for josh Jesus, safe in the arms of Jesus. 
May he be. That was my prayer. And now we can say he is safe in the hands of the Lord Jesus, which is far better. And in the Bible, there were great big tough people that had problems that, uh, that uh, were beyond them. There was a centurion, wasn't there? And this centurion, no doubt, I see you've got a centurion's hat in the, uh, in the schoolroom there. Uh, but there's a centurion, they were great chiefs of the Roman army in charge of a hundred soldiers. They were really important, brave, strong men. And yet, did you know that a centurion could behave like a little child? A centurion could come to Jesus, telling Jesus that he'd got a problem that was beyond him, that he couldn't do anything about, and ask the Lord Jesus to do it, do what was necessary for him. He said to Jesus, Lord, my servant lies at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. He's in a terrible way. And it was so worrying, he couldn't do anything. No doubt he'd had all sorts of doctors uh, looking at what was going on. And Jesus said, I'm going to come and I will heal. And the centurion said, uh, just say the word and uh, he will be healed. The centurion, you see, we, God is in heaven. And yet he can help us right where we are now. Just like this centurion realised that Jesus was over there. His servant was in bed ill over there. But Jesus could speak the word and the man over here could be healed. And that's what we are believers now. Jesus is able to speak of boys and girls and the lives of men and women and boys and girls are able to be blessed. This is the God, you see, that we uh, believe in. And the centurion, his servant, was healed by Jesus. Go thy way, thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And do you know, when he got home, uh, I think we read one of the places, the servants, if you like, checked their clocks. And they said, when did Jesus say that uh, he would be healed? And it was the, the centurion was said, well, such and such a time yesterday. And they looked at their watches and they'd remembered and thought, well, that was when the man got better. You see, Jesus over here, the man that was sick over there, and Jesus healed him. And this is, these are witnesses that are written about in the God's word. They weren't people that just made the stories up. They were people that experienced God's goodness and God's uh, mercy. Jesus is God. That is what we proclaim here. Jesus is God and Jesus is God to help us in our every need. We come as little children to Jesus, humble. Children have to learn a lot, don't they? We have to learn a lot spiritually. Spiritually, every day is a school day. There are many things uh, beyond us, many things uh, that uh, we can't uh, control. Safety on the roads, we can't give ourselves safety. Healing from the cancers of this world, some of your relatives have... Uh, so far been healed of uh, those kind of things did we do it it's God you see the things that he has done great things and that's why I believe that there's in one case certainly there's going to be a thanksgiving service for healing mercies uh, for those that have been ill with cancer and now uh, a lot better then there's preaching the gospel and we preach and there are souls in front of us Souls that I know, the best words that I use will just go in one ear and out the next, unless God blesses. But we are believers that God is able to take the words that we speak and that we lovingly preach to the souls of people. Each one of you are very dear and prayed for because we believe that Jesus Christ is able to open your hearts and open your souls to receive the precious word of God. To make your ears hear and your eyes understand and see and your hearts understand the truth. The Bible tells us it's a foolishness preaching. But we are, and so, but we do these things in belief that God is able to bring the wise words of his word into your souls, our souls. You see, ah. Uh, Little children brought to God, the Lord Jesus, our Heavenly Father. Some of them 
You've got children or young people, loved ones far, far away. They're right over there somewhere. But you, our Jesus, you are able to pray to your Jesus and he is able to bless and help. Here's another situation where it is, it, we're little children, we can't do it. But our God is able to help in the most impossible of circumstances. And you'll have new schools, new jobs, new colleges, new universities, new careers, exams, new relationships, marriages, new experience, husband and wife, mother and father for the first time. All sorts of things, illnesses and, and death itself. And all of these are things in your family and all of your things, these are things that we can't deal with ourselves. We're human beings. We're not supposed to deal with all these things ourselves. We are designed to be able to ask the Lord Jesus for him to do all these things for us. To come humbly as little children into the hands of Jesus. And Jesus, verse 16, took them up in his arms put his hands upon them and blessed them. That is what Jesus did. He imparted blessing. And Jesus' blessing is that which lasts forever, safe in the arms of the Lord Jesus. A Josh in a grave, yet safe in the arms of the Lord Jesus. You see, for each one of us, we have... Uh, a life maybe, Hugo may be here for in a hundred years' time, for all we know. But we're not always going to be here. We, all of us, every single one of us, needs to be aware that the end of our days will come here upon earth. And it's not just one life live it. It's there is an eternal life that Jesus lovingly tells all of us about so that you and I and plead with him, Lord Jesus, like I'm a little child. All these things are beyond me. But Jesus, be a heavenly father to me forever and ever and ever. Well, may God add his blessing to those thoughts. Let us pray. Dear Lord God, we do thank thee for thy precious, precious word. It tells us such things that give us a confidence not in ourselves, but a confidence in thee, Lord Jesus. The understanding that we have no ability at all to care for ourselves in this world or the world to come, but that we have an eternal, loving, kind, heavenly Father that will never leave and never forsake. And Lord Jesus, we plead that thou would impart this knowledge, impart this truth into the hearts and lives of each one, from the youngest little Hugo to the oldest here this morning. Lord, that each of us may live as little children in the tender loving care of our Heavenly Father, now and always, we plead for Jesus Christ.